So in the previous video, we talked about computing geometric sums. What if instead we want to work on a geometric series? That is to say, what if we want to add together all the terms in a geometric sequence? What do we do all of them, right? Well, as it's a sequence, there's infinitely many terms right here. So we get this infinite sum. We're going to take a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed all the way up to, well, we never actually stop. n goes to infinity. Now, in the previous video, we actually found a formula for our s sub n, right? We saw that s sub n will equal a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. This is the general formula. And so what we want to then consider is if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, that is, we're looking for the limit of this partial sum sequence. Well, let's take the limit as n goes to infinity here. Well, the calculation is going to go forward in the following way. A is a constant. We can take it out. So we get A times the limit of 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Because, again, this is the limit as N goes to infinity. A doesn't change based upon that. And then the next part is the 1 minus R, likewise, is constant with respect to N. So you get A over 1 minus R times the limit as N goes to infinity here of 1 minus R to the N. Uh, then the next part, again, breaking things up a little bit more, you get a over 1 minus r times, well, the limit of 1 is just going to be 1 here. So you get 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n. And so this is, this is the critical junction right here. This limit will be, this, this sequence will be convergent only if this limit exists right here. The limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n. And there's kind of some options going on right here. Well, what can we what can we say about r to the n? Well, if r is too big, this is going to go off towards infinity, right? So if like r was 2 or 4 or 3 or pi, those powers are just going to get bigger, 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 bigger. Uh, and that's going to go off towards infinity. So if so this limit here, so this limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n, this could itself become infinity, right? This is going to happen if r is like big, right? In this case, actually, it's going to be if it's if it's greater than or equal to one. Uh, should say greater or equal to uh, one here. If you if it, if r is bigger than one, that thing's going to go off towards infinity, right? Uh, what else can we say? If if it's if it's a small number though, like if it's one half or one third, what's going to happen as you start taking powers? Uh, this thing is going to get smaller over time. So like one half, the next power would be one fourth, then one eighth, then one sixteenth, then one thirty second. These are going to get smaller, 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 going towards zero, in fact. Uh, and so in that situation, if you have a small number, make slight, slightly amendments to what we had before. If the absolute value of our R is greater than or equal to one, this thing is going to explode here. I guess I should just say if it's greater than one, you're going to explode. Um, and then... This would equal zero if our absolute value is less than one. So take small numbers. Negative is not a big deal either here. If you took negative powers of one half, that, uh, that is, sorry to say, if you take powers of negative one half, that thing's also going to go off towards the zeros right here. And so this number, as you take the limit, will go to zero, like you see right here, only if, only if the absolute value of r is less than 1, in which case then the infinite sum will equal this a over 1 minus r. So you end up with uh, the sum, k equals 1 to infinity, of your geometric sequence a times r to the k minus 1. This will equal a over 1 minus r. Now you'll do, we'll notice I said that the absolute value of r has to be strictly less than 1. If the absolute value of r is exactly equal to 1, things can get a little bit different, right? If We'll just handle those separately, right? What if r was equal to 1? Well, this would then look like our, our infinite sum would then look like a plus a plus a plus a plus a, right? Continue on, right? And so unless a was 0 or something, this is going to equal... This will equal plus or minus infinity based upon whether a is positive or negative. So that's not a possibility either. Um, and then another issue is if you took negative 1, r is negative 1, your sum would look something like the following. And just for simplicity's sake, I'll say a equals 1. You end up with 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 
one, let's see, plus one minus one, plus one minus one, et cetera. And so this can, this, this, it turns out this series right here has confused people for a long time because some people are of the following mindsets like, oh, I see what's going on here. If I take one minus one, that's a zero. If I take one minus one, that's a zero. One minus one, that's a zero. One minus one, that's a zero. If you have an infinite number of zeros, that adds up to be zero. So this thing is, this thing is convergent to zero, right? Wrong. Let me show you one slight modification of this. Um, if we were to do it this way, we kind of redo the parentheses here, you're going to have one, so this would be one plus negative one plus one, which is zero, plus negative one plus one, which is zero, plus negative one plus one, which is zero. You get an infinite number of zeros, right? In which case, this you would get one plus zero, which is actually equal to one. And so one one way of associating the parentheses gives you a sum of one. Another one gives you zero. Which one is it? It can't be one and zero, right? That's actually because this series here is divergent. This sum does not add up to be anything. Um, it doesn't add up to be one. It doesn't add to be zero because it adds up to be nothing. It's, 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 it's divergent. There's, there's no limit to this sequence here. Uh, and we'll, this will make a little bit more sense as we talk about the tests for divergence a little bit later. Uh, but like I said, this series has confused people for a long time because some people said it's zero, some people said it's one, in which case then you erroneously might say something like zero equals one. Um, there was, in fact, middle-age uh, clerics that try to make, they, 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 they did these philosophical proofs of the existence of God, and some of them actually based it upon this argument here that God must exist because, you know, we created something from nothing and you know, whether 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 one believes in deity or not will be a topic I'm not going to touch into right now. But this proof of such existence of deity is flawed because it's based upon a flawed calculus notion. Zero doesn't equal one. This series is divergent and the error seems to come from the convergence of that statement, the, the belief convergence. And so if we want to find the, the following geometric series, I should say, I mean, a series is a sum, but it's an infinite sum. So the word series is a little bit better here. Let's find the geometric series right here. And so I claim this is a geometric sequence. Let's look at it real quick. Uh, the first term would be two. That's, that's, that's easy to see because it's just the first term right there. What about consecutive terms? If I take four thirds and I divide it by two, that equals two thirds. This is my candidate for R. And if I look at eight ninths divided by four thirds, you're gonna see that's likewise equal to two thirds. And as those are the only three terms they tell us and they claim it's geometric, we will have to take it on gospel there and see that the constant ratio has gotta be two thirds. And so if we take the sum of this thing uh, by the formula we saw before, right? The infinite sum, take the sum of a geometric sequence, a times r to the n minus one, as n goes from one to infinity here, this will equal a over one minus r. You just take the sum of all the geometric terms there. And so this is going to look like the first term, which is two, over one minus the common ratio, which is two thirds. And this then equals, well, one minus two thirds is equal to one third. And two divided by, two divided by a third is equal to six. Like so. And this gives us, in fact, the sum of this geometric series. It adds up to be six, which is quite incredible. The sum of infinite numbers adds up to be six. And this kind of puts a lot of students back at first, like how in the world could an infinite sum be something finite? But we've actually been doing that for a long time. Integrals are infinite sums as well. It's, a, it's, a, it's an infinite Riemann sum, which again is slightly different than a series here, but a number of infinite things can in fact be finite. Um, another sort of example you can kind of think of is imagine we have a rope which is exactly equal to one foot long. Well, if we were to cut it into two pieces, well, then we have two ropes which are of one half length. Well, what if we take the second rope and we cut it in half? Then we'll get a rope of one half, then a rope of one quarter, and then the other one is one quarter. Well, if we cut that one in half, we'll get two ropes of one eighth. The total length is still one. If we cut that last one in one half, we'll get one sixteenth and then another 16th, and then we keep on doing that. We keep on cutting the last rope in half, 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 and we do that um, ad infinitum, then it turns out that we will have an infinite piece, an infinite number of pieces of rope, but each rope, when you add them all together, the length is still equal to one. And this is sort of a, a, sort of a concrete way of trying to envision the idea that one half 
plus one fourth, plus one eighth, plus one sixteenth. If we take up all, all the powers of two, this will add up to be one. And this, of course, is also, again, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, uh, this is this this infinite convergence is sort of a thing that that baffled uh, the, the the earlier earlier scholars and such right. Um, if you look at the the motion paradox of Zeno, known as Achilles and the tortoise, he tries to argue that existence as we know it is flawed because motion is impossible because motion would require an infinite sum. Um, and there and and Zeno then concluded that an infinite sum doesn't exist. Well, that I, I would say is a flawed argument because Zeno wasn't using proper notions of, of calculus here. An infinite sum actually can equal a finite number. That was the flaw in Zeno's argument there. So uh, I'm not willing to say that motion in physics as we know it doesn't exist. Let's look at one more example here of, an, of a geometric series here. So is the series n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the 2n times 3 to the 1 minus n convergent or divergent? Well, again, I kind of let the cat out of the bag here. This We're going to represent this as a geometric series, in which case it's very easy to check whether a geometric series is convergent or divergent. And it requires rewriting things a little bit. This this uh, this expression right here, this 2 to the 2n times 3 to the 1 minus n, I'm going to rewrite this using some exponent rules, right? So 2 to the... Uh, 2 to the 2 to the n, I can rewrite this as 2 squared times n using my usual exponent laws. And 3 to the 1 minus n, I can write as 3 to the first times 3 to the negative n, like so. n will range from 1 to infinity here. And again, rewriting these things a little bit more, we're going to get the sum of 4 to the n on top times it by 3 over 3 to the n on the bottom, where n goes from 1 to infinity here. And so what we end up with is 3 times the sum, or in, in it ranges from 1 to infinity, and we're going to have a 4 thirds to the n right here. And so this is where we can actually see evidence of a geometric sequence. We have, our, we have some constant value right here uh, times by 4 thirds, but in particular we see this exponential expression right here this exponential expression, 4 thirds to the n. So this is really what tells us we have a geometric sequence. And so what one has to do is just compare the ratio here. The ratio is going to be the base of this exponential growth. The ratio will be 4 thirds. And this 4 thirds is too big, right? Um, a geometric series will be convergent. A geometric series will be convergent if and only if your common ratio is its absolute value is less than one. We say the ratio is small. Otherwise, the series will be divergent. The geometric series will be divergent if and only if our ratio's absolute value is greater than or equal to one. That is to say, it's a big ratio. And this is the case that we're in right now. This Our ratio here is big because it's four thirds. And therefore, we would conclude that this is a divergent geometric series. Um, this thing doesn't necessarily add up to anything. It doesn't add up to a number. If we want to describe something to it, uh, we could say that's equal to infinity. But if the series adds up to be infinity, that still is an example of a divergent uh, series.